good afternoon and welcome to the midday news here's what we have in the bulletin final ballot count shows both political parties to control seven municipal corporations each political commentator cautions prime minister not to call general election just yet and later in sports jamaican athletes begin medal hunt at world indoor championships in scotland Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. After days of counting, the Electoral Office Commission of Jamaica ECJ has announced that both political parties will be in control of seven municipal corporations each. The ECJ says while counting indicated that the Jamaica Labour Party won seven municipal corporations to the PNP's Five, a tiebreaker in the KCMC along with the Portmore mayoral ship has leveled the tally. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation is tied to 20 seats each, but the PNP won the popular vote in Kingston and St. Andrew and so will take up the mayoral position. The PNP also won the position of mayor of the municipality of Portmore and the popular vote islandwide. Overall, the PNP won seats in 115 electoral divisions, up from 98 in 2016, and the GLP won 113 down from 130. The breakdown is as follows. In St. Thomas, the GLP won six seats to the PNP's four. In Portland, seven seats to the PNP's two. For St. Anne, the GLP has 11 to the PNP's five. In Trelawney, the GLP GLP 6 to the PNP's 3. In St. James, GLP 11 seats to 6 for the PNP. In St. Elizabeth, the GLP has 9 to the PNP's 6. And in Clarendon, the GLP won 12 to the PNP's 10. In the meantime, the PNP won all seven seats in Hanover. In Westmoreland, the PNP 11 to the GLP's 3. The PNP won 12 seats to the GLP's 3 in Manchester. PNP 7 to the GLP's 6 in St. Mary. And PNP 22 to the GLP's 19 in St. Catherine. With regard to the 14 municipal corporations, including Portmore, the Jamaica Labour Party and People's National Party will each be in control of seven. The Jamaica Labour Party went into Monday's election as the incumbent in nine municipal corporations to the PNP's five. For the health of democracy, it is good when we have a, a, a balancing or a separation of power rather than a concentration of power. So one political party controls central government, one political party now controls central government, and the other controls the local government. And that is good in, the ter in terms of ensuring that we have checks and balances in our political, in our political system. Political commentator Damian Gordon says this is a good look for the PNP. The People's National Party supporters would have been energized and mobilized by Monday's result because this is the first in a long while that the party has tasted anything that closely resembles victory. And, uh, and, and this has not only emboldened the legitimacy of Mark Golden as a party's leader, but it has also had the effect of energizing the party's base. In Monday's local government election, less than 30% of persons registered to vote cast their ballots. For Mr. Gordon, this simply means a high percentage of Jamaicans are still not confident in the electoral process. Not voting is also a vote of no confidence because it suggests that over 70% of Jamaicans have no confidence in either of the two political parties to manage the affairs of the country. And that is certainly bad for democracy because it brings into question the legitimacy of any elected government because it means that the government is elected with low levels of public support. So that is a concern, a serious concern that has to be addressed by high both political parties. A political commentator is cautioning the Prime Minister about calling the general election soon. According to Paul Ashley, now is not the time as there are a number of issues that need to be addressed first. Mr. Ashley was speaking on Power 106 Friday. Amoy Harriet reports. 
There have been speculations as to whether Prime Minister Andrew Honus will call a general election in the wake of the local government poll in February. The general election is constitutionally due in 2025, but the Prime Minister may call it before that time. However, political commentator Paul Ashley doesn't think now would be a good time for Mr. Honus to call the election. The Prime Minister has to do certain things and he has to use the time to do certain things. He cannot go to the uh, general election right away. He will. The PMP has the momentum in that they have energized their base. There's no doubt about that. They have re-energized energized their base. They, are, they figure they are uh, on a roll that they will take the general. Mr. Ashley says the Prime Minister made certain promises when assuming political office that need to be fulfilled. For example, the fixed election date. This is a low-hanging fruit that he could pick. And I would suggest any time between August 1st and August 6th that Jamaicans in the diaspora could come back home and vote. He also made a promise that he would ensure that Jamaicans are the only persons in Parliament. That also is a low-hanging fruit that has the support of both sides. And then... The impeachment of politicians. I think that the civil society really is pressing for that. And that is a relatively low-hanging fruit at this time because both political parties will gain kudos from cooperating with that. Mr. Ashley also says Mr. Honus made a commitment to the Jamaican people about road and water that he needs to deliver on before calling a general election. If his administration does not perform well in the roads and the water, the electorate is not concerned about which uh, arm of the administration will correct these problems. They are not concerned if it is the local government or the central government. They want roads, improved roads and water. I, I for one, believe that uh, the Prime Minister should revisit the Ombudsman submergence. Uh, the ECJ cannot deal with it, especially during this year when the stakes are higher. Amoy Harriet. TVJ News. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the focus of the Jamaican economy continues to be on growth and development. Despite the challenges affecting the health sector, Mr. Holness insists that the sector continues to thrive in many ways. According to Prime Minister Andrew Holness, in 2023 alone, the government increased the drug subsidy for over 350,000 active National Health Fund NHF beneficiaries. Mr. Holness says this is in addition to the fact that there are over 21,000 beneficiaries of the Jamaica Drug for the Elderly Program, JADEP. Further. The NHF instituted a $1,600 subsidy for a one prostate specific antigen test, a PSA test per year to benefit and encourage more of our men to get tested for prostate cancer. That's a new benefit that we have, we have, we have added. He says 22 conditions are now covered under the NHF. This represents an estimated $450 million in additional subsidy, which will benefit some 40,000 Jamaicans. Ten new medications are now available under the benefits program. In addition, the NHF has assigned 61 contracts, valued, assigned rather, 61 contracts, valued at $27 billion for the procurement of essential drugs under the 2023 to 2026 Pharmaceutical Awards Program. Again, the caring economy. Mr. Holness also points to the new digital system for health records that was recently implemented. Which will ensure that the access to health records, the ability of doctors to properly look at the data and to use that data and information in the diagnosis and service that that has been increased. Mr. Holness was speaking at a function in Manchester on Thursday. Over $350 million has been spent to boost the fisheries sector. Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Floyd Green says several stakeholders will benefit from it. Karen Simpson reports. We apologize for that. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. 
Welcome back to the Midday News. Measures are being put in place to eliminate lottery scamming in the business process outsourcing BPO sector. With over 60,000 Jamaicans across eight parishes being employed to the sector, officials say several incidents of lottery scamming have been reported among the employees in recent years. The Global Services Association of Jamaica told TVJ News that the criminal act increased during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. It has since subsided to an extent, but more still needs to be done. Private security companies coming up with solutions uh, that will, uh, that has given me some sort of assurance that in about six to 12 months, we should be in a better place in identifying, deterring and finding these people so that they do not um, continue to make violations and, and continue forward without any consequences. In the meantime, he believes local companies should take the issue of cyber attacks more seriously. I cannot emphasize how important it is to understand data security in depth and have the right processes and protections in place and to be compliant. Even the best of the economies, brightest of the Fortune 50 companies get cyber attacks, right? Um, so not taking any action is, is going to hurt the company and the reputation. The Ministry of National Security is looking to increase expenditure in the coming financial year for infrastructure programs being done across Jamaica through the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. Among the areas of focus is the Safe Passage Project that aims to provide a safe environment for students as they traverse streets to and from school. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Strang says his ministry will be working with the Education Ministry and the academic community to improve improve safety in the nation's schools. This, he says, is important as the perception of school safety and security is directly correlated with academic performance. Which indicates that while the school campus may provide some degree of buffer from things that may threaten their safety and security, their off-campus commute experience exposes them to events that makes them feel even less secure. Work across all the ministries relating to the social challenges the Ministry of Housing, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, and SDC to work with the school community to ensure we can increase the level of safety um, for our students. It's now time for the Business Minute. The Planning Institute of Jamaica estimates that the local manufacturing sector saw a 0.3% reduction for the fourth quarter of 2023. Director General of the PIOJ, Dr. Wayne Henry, says this stemmed from lower output for the period October to December in the sub-industries, food, beverages and tobacco and other manufacturing. Dr. Henry says the downturn in the other manufacturing group was due to reduced production for most petroleum items surveyed. Further afield, Oprah Winfrey is leaving Weight Watchers after a long stint as director. The media mogul notified the company earlier this week, saying she doesn't want to be re-elected. A reason wasn't revealed. But according to a statement from Weight Watchers, her decision was not due to a disagreement or any matter related to the company's operations, policies or practices. Winfrey said she will sell her sizable stake in the company and donate it to the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Weight Watchers has faced more competition recently from prescription drugs used for weight loss like Ozempic and Wegovy. Last year, Winfrey said she added a weight loss medication to her regimen but did not say which drug. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Karian Simpson. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, Cubans are now dealing with a staggering case of sticker shock at fuel pumps as the largest increase in decades goes into effect. The Cuban government, which owns every gas station on the island, says that starting March it will raise prices at the pump more than 500 percent. The increase was supposed to take place in February but was delayed after the government said their system suffered a cyber attack in late January. On the international scene, 
At least 43 people have died and 22 others remain in critical condition after fire broke out in a building in the capital of Bangladesh Thursday night. The blaze is believed to have started at a restaurant on the second floor of the multi-story structure before rapidly spreading to other restaurants and shops. At least 75 people were rescued by fire service officials, 42 of whom were unconscious. The injured are currently being treated at two major health facilities, but doctors are warning that the death toll could rise as they say the victims with severe burns are beyond recognition. And hundreds of people gathered in Russia as the funeral service of opposition leader Alexei Navalny got underway Friday. Navalny died on February 16 in a Russian prison after being jailed for three years on charges decried as politically motivated. His family has blamed President Vladimir Putin for his death, but Moscow says he died of natural causes. His death came weeks before the country's presidential elections set for March 15. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Amoy Harriet. Thank you, Amoy. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jeremy Brown.